This is 10 year old meat. Where has it been stored for the last 10 years? In a box in my basement. So for a decade, this is beef and tallow that has been in Dan's basement. All right, let me go get a knife. Oh. Let's do it. Welcome to another episode with the Bearded Butchers right here on our YouTube channel. Today, we're gonna to talk about beef tallow. A lot of interesting things that can be done with beef tallow. Of course, everybody knows suet for birds. Um, but today we're gonna to be going a little bit more in depth about rendering it down for other uses, like maybe using it as a frying oil. You can make French fries, all kinds of cool stuff like that. I have a couple 100% grass-fed beef hinds hanging behind me, located right here on the inside of this loin. So here's your round, here's your short loin. This right here is your beef suet. Um, hanging inside is still attached as the beef kidney. We're gonna go ahead and remove that. Around here, we typically save that for pets, but then we're gonna go ahead and get, just get started trimming out this beef suet. You gotta be careful when you trim this when you remove it because located right behind there is that beef tenderloin and we don't want to cut into that tenderloin. So we just cut and pull. We can remove this whole chunk of beef soot. Now keep in mind when you buy beef in bulk, this does have an effect on your yield. So some beef have obviously more fat than others, and this is grass-fed, so still a pretty decent amount of fat for being grass-fed. So we just wanna start by removing these glands. We don't want those glands in there. There's a little bit of connective tissue or gristle right here. Let's just go ahead and remove that. Once we get it somewhat cleaned up, pretty simple process. We're just gonna get it cut up into slices and then we'll cut it into cubes. Just smaller pieces end up rendering down better. If you leave it in a whole piece, it can take a while to, to cook. So once we get the slices, we're gonna go ahead and go into cubes. So traditionally, French fries were made using rendered beef tallow. There was a lot of speculation that fat's bad for you. Come to find out all these years later, maybe it's not quite so bad. Maybe it's all the hydrogenated oils that are actually bad for you and animal fat is good for you. So, Always a little gland located right there at the top. Just definitely want to get those glands out of there because you don't want any off-putting flavors or anything like that. So we'll just, a little bit more that we trimmed off the top. And this will all render down to and do a real nice, beautiful white oil. So once you get everything cubed up, I have a, lug and this has some of those fat trimmings that like you see this back fat right here we save all this too and that's what these pieces are they've already been previously cubed up so I'm just going to go ahead and add our beef tallow right to this lug we certainly don't like to see anything go to waste and this is just one more way to utilize every single piece on this animal and it'll serve a purpose for us. So we'll get this all blended up. And from here, we're gonna get this into our kettle. We're gonna render it down. We'll show you the temperatures. We'll show you the times. Um, and we actually, we filter it and we put it in tubs and then we let it set up. And it's a nice, beautiful, white, creamy beef tallow that can be used for many different purposes. And uh, there's a little, we have a little surprise for you here at the end that has to do with something that we made 10 years ago involving beef fat, and we're gonna eat it on camera. So 10 year old something, you just have to wait and see. So off to the cooking process, let's get this in the kettle. Mine was all fat. 
back in the early days, we were doing a trade show or a rib festival. We were setting up a booth and cooking stuff with our spices on it. And we cooked up a whole bunch of pork country ribs. We had four blends at the time. We'd season them and be like, you want to try high, you want whatever. Well, the night we're on, everybody got drunk. Well, not our crew, but everybody at the festival. And so we were going out, I was going around with a plate and offering samples to the crowd. And I just uh, gave a young couple uh, samples and the young gal, um, you know, like how, how do you like it or whatever? She was like, mine was all fat. And she spit when she said fat, <laughs> spit right in my face. So let's cook some fat. How's that sound? Good job, boys. Look at him. We're making a video. Um, so our beef tallow, we've got it all ch chunked up. And we're going to take it back and we're going to put it in our, we always called it the lard kettle. Really, what it is, it's a steam, a steam jacketed kettle. Obviously, you probably don't have one of these at home, so crock pot's probably your best bet. You could go in your oven and say, put it like in a Dutch oven, then put it in your oven. And then you could do it on the stove top. I would say those three methods in order of best method with crock pot being first. The reason being is it's easier to keep the temperature low. You wanna keep your temperature right around 225. Your oven, you could keep it that low. And then the stove top's gonna be your most difficult, unless you have one of those double melter things that you make you know, like for chocolate. But this is what this is. This is, has water in between, it's double layered. So we always call it the, the lard kettle. The key here is that just not, not to rush this process, it's gonna take um, the better part of six hours and you can you know these came off of our trim table the smaller these are cut the more more surface area the more you know I guess the faster it'll melt um, you can also grind it trouble with grinding it has a tendency to kind of turn into a glob so you do want to be cautious if you are grinding um, but we'll just get this in here. Now, this is a mixture of the kidney soot that surrounds the, the kidney. Basically, your fat, your internal fat is kind of the more desirable, if you will. This is fat trimming from the um, carcass itself. Now, we mix the two together and we get one product. The purists will say that your tallow just from the kidney is the purest form of tallow. And they're not wrong. Um, you just get maybe just a little more flavor and a little darker color when you use the actual carcass trimmings, which we do. It turns out great for us. Now people are gonna use this for home care products, say uh, balms, soaps, creams, um, use it for candles, use it for pet foods, um, a lot of different uses, but this process will take uh, upwards of six hours. I think I got about 80 pounds in here. I'm gonna stir it. Takes a while to get going. You can't rush it. You can't burn it. So we're gonna turn it up the kettle just over uh, 200. And we wanna get this to start going. We'll, we'll stir it a few times, but right now we're just gonna put it to bed for a while. All right, we are... It's a little over five and a half hours, almost six hours in. I've been stirring occasionally, but I think we're ready to pull it. So we're gonna strain it as it comes off, but let's get it up to the floor. Start, we call it pulling it, but filling some tubs. We have a brand new product, Bearded Butcher Original Beef Jerky. Kids just all have to be fishing out of the pond, so we're gonna take them a little delivery. Kids want some jerky? Yeah. One over. Back for you, back for you, back for you. Oh, thank you. 
You're welcome. There you go, girl. Ladies first. Here, boy. What do you guys think? Delicious whole muscle jerky, perfect for any occasion. It's now live on our website, by the pack or by the case, and it's delicious. So go check it out, beardofbutchers.com. Go get some. So we want it to be just a little over, this is starting to cool down a little bit, about 205, but while that cools down a little bit before we put it in our tubs, we have a special treat that includes beef tallow. That's the month and that's the year. So these are, this is 10 year old meat. Get Dan over here. Dan. Tell us a little bit about this 10 year old meat. Dan was here 10 years ago when he made, Dan made this. So this is pemmican. Pemmican is a mix of shredded dried beef, fat, and sometimes fruit, but this doesn't have it. So all it is, beef, fat, salt, smoke, and vacuum sealed. Ten so years ago. It, where has it been stored for the last 10 years? In a box in my basement. So for a decade, this is beef and tallow that has been in Dan's basement. Hot pemmican was like, what, like a trail? food for mm -hmm. the Native yeah. Americans. High and energy, food. packed with protein. Well, how much, how, much are, how, Clark, how many calories are we West talking Coast. here, Dan? I think the bigger chunks have around a thousand in a bar. A thousand in a bar? Mm -hmm. I think this, this, um, this is our opportunity to try 10 year old unrefrigerated. What do you plan uh, what you, on spending your weekend <laughs> doing this weekend after <laughs> eating this? Because I have a feeling this is going to lube up your intestines. <laughs> you, you're taking Feels a bite fresh, it. right, Josh? You slicing it or just, just taking a bite? I mean, you got to just like... Just... All right, let me go get a knife. Oh. Let's do it. Which is better? It's bison, oddly like bison testicles or pemmican. It doesn't have much flavor. It's kind of like cardboard, coffee grounds that don't have the coffee flavor. Pretty bland. I think I'd have to Did you put some, any salt or seasoning in it? It was salted a little. It wasn't. Need some beer to butcher seasoning. I think so. No. Should we have a bar eating challenge? Should we put down a whole bar? <laughs> um, it's not terrible. Give Spencer. I think the idea here is that you want. He's on a calorie cut right yeah, now. Yeah, I can't even have that. No, you, you can no. It's not a big piece. No. I think that you, the idea here is that you want a food that you can store for a long period of time that's packed with energy. It's edible. Get over here, and fellas. A, and a, get, an animal product, Josh, too. Jeremy, right. need to try that. How did, you, how did you make it? It's the same process as beef jerky, but you dry it to brittle, crispy. Don't be Shut shy, boys. Up. Don't I be shy. I, like, I think I, like I got it. four or five, five packs total, including that one. Oh, that's oh, a big one. Oh, that's oh, a pack your, back now. pack your jaw with that one. <laughs> <laughs> just get rid of that. You can just pack your lip full of this. No, I, think the, I think the meat side of it's a little better than the fat side because the it, fat yeah, just gets a little waxy. Yeah. A little, little heavy on the fat. Like a, one bite, I want it to be sweet. You know, I feel like it should be something that's sweet. It looks Gra like a you cookie. Put, put, put fruit in it. Blueberries, might, apples. I might regret that big bite. <laughs> <laughs> Quickly regretting that big bite. <laughs> well, oh. we'll check back in in 12 to 24 hours. No, it's pretty incredible that this has been unrefrigerated. You uh, guys are heading towards the trash can. A meat. No, no, get it out of there. Get it <laughs> We're headed towards the water cooler. <laughs> unrefrigerated meat and tallow. So this beef. 
was raised on the same farm as that beef. I guess it probably was born around 2011. Mm -hmm. And then we butchered it in 2013. And 10 years later, a decade after it went in the package, still edible. Pretty Can we all say that? Well, it's edible. It's edible, but we yeah, don't know what sure. effect it's going to have on your body. We'll find out later. But if you're hungry, all right, yeah, let's, put some, let's put some tallow in tubs. What are we doing, then? We're going to put some seasoning in it and uh, reseal it and open it up in another 10 years. 2033. We'll be back. So I have a strainer. This is, these are ham stock nuts. I'm not sure what the home option would be. Cheesecloth, I think, would be too fine. And we just start filling tubs. Fun little fact, until 1993, McDonald's used beef tallow, or at least like 97% beef tallow. I don't know what the other 3% was. Cook their french fries in. We got about third, uh, fifth, no, I'm them. joking. There's 68, 68, there's that and that, and just a small portion that didn't cook down, which can keep cooking it down. Um, the longer you cook it, the more it's gonna melt, but kind of has a diminishing return, but that's a pretty good yield. Um, beautiful, golden, clear, tallow so as this as this sets up it does turn white so it's a little bit yellow now but it does turn a nice nice white color as it right cools. it's going to get nice and firm we're going to put the cooler overnight so again 225 degrees that's about the right temperature whatever your melting device is um crock pot's probably the easiest thing to use at home something that's double i'm sure scott went over this but uh like the double chamber with the steam crock pot would work. Don't try to just put this in your skillet and throw it on your stove top because it'll it'll burn. Yeah, sure. and you of course if you're trimming a brisket or something like that, you can save the fat, render it down. The stove top is the hardest method because it will tend to burn, but you put it in your oven in a Dutch oven, think turn your it, oven down. Think of it like melting chocolate. It's pretty much the same thing. Yeah. So once you have it melted down and strained. You can use it for all kinds of different things. In fact, we've even heard that you can make a, like a whipped compound butter with it, put it back on your steaks. We put it on briskets. I think in our uh, 300 pound brisket cook video, we were putting it on top of our brisket. Lots of food choices, lots of home and beauty care, candle making, or even if you want to store beef for 10 years in your basement. Many good uses. Tallow is one of the age old, melted down, resourceful uses from the cow. So not just taking the muscle, um, using the fat, it's just another way that you can recycle, reuse, do that with a brisket, even like I said, even a brisket. So we've seen some comments where people are like, you know, oh my gosh, I can't believe you leave that big chunk of fat inside the carcass uh, when it goes, you know, from the, on the rail into the cooler. People think that, um, you know, we're just adding weight to the carcass. We don't sell carcass as a whole animal here. So for us, it doesn't, gain any real value that way by leaving it in there. This is where the value is at on that animal. Um, and then when you see us break it out of the carcass, it's certainly, you know, it's not going into our inedible barrel and getting thrown away. It's getting repurposed for something like, just like you see right here. So um, yep. using the whole animal, making sure that nothing goes to waste. That's right, once these are cooled, we're going to snap the lids on in an airtight container. Um, we refrigerate them commercially uh, it's gonna last a minimum of a year. So into the cooler they go. These will be sold in our store. Hope you enjoyed the video. Pretty sure Learned I got some, some more French fries on the menu for me. Can melt them down, make some French fries. Mm -hmm. My little deep fryer, make some French fries this weekend. 
Thanks for watching. We're the Bearded Butchers, and we'll see you next time right here on YouTube. See ya.